What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Cephalo. And so today is finally the first video where I'm able to inform you guys about these beautiful animals, cephalopods. And I'm so excited. I've been so hyped for this all week. I hope you guys have been too, because I've been so anxious to talk to you guys about these magnificent animals. So before we get into this, this would really help out a lot if you guys could hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I, I would really appreciate that and make me really happy. So today we are going to talk about what are cephalopods, what makes them so unique, and then we're going to transition over into an octopus, which is my favorite cephalopod. And I'm going to give you guys an overview on the exterior and interior about an octopus. I hope you guys are excited because I sure am. So let's get right into the video. So cephalopods, guys. What is a cephalopod? So the meaning of cephalopod is head foot. And cephalopod is from Greek. So cephalo means head and pod means foot. And the phylum of cephalopods is mollusca. So cephalopods are related, related to the shell invertebrates. So if you guys aren't understanding what I'm exactly talking about right there, related to the shell invertebrates. So let's take a snail for an example. So when you take off a shell of the snail and you take the head of the snail and you take the foot of the snail and you extend it out, and you take the foot and you chop that up into eight limbs or ten limbs, you literally have yourself a cephalopod right there because that is basically what a cephalopod is. It's really interesting. They are invertebrates, so they have no backbone, no bones. They only have one bone, though, and that is their beak. And cephalopods consist of four animals, octopus, squid, cuttlefish, and nautilus. So the first octopus right here, this is an octopus vulgaris. This is a common octopus. The animal next to it, that is a cuttlefish. And the next one, that is a squid. And the fourth one, that is a chambered nautilus. And cephalopods are a very di diverse group of mollusks. They consist of oh, over 800 plus species which is absolutely amazing. But I think there are a lot more out there because we've only discovered, what, about 6 or 7% of our ocean. So I think there's going to be a whole bunch more out there. And that is my plan for when I grow up, is to discover more. And what makes a cephalopod so unique? Cephalopods have been around since the late Cambrian period, so about 500 plus million years ago. Now I'll name off a, a few animals that I know um, that are extinct. So the first one is a Plegoranocerus cambria. So these animals um, aren't really known. No one really knows about these animals. They are um, to believed um, the oldest cephalopod ever. There is a animal that was uh, before that. Um, which was called a Nectocaris. It kind of looks like a Pokemon. It's really interesting looking. Um, but it was disputed because of the lack of features of what a cephalopod had. But the Plecronosaurus is about the size of a periwinkle. I think that's what they're called. That you'll find on the um, shores of beaches. That you'll find on rocks and stuff. They're really small. Um, they have... a uh, a small little beak. They have little arms. Um, I don't know much about them because there's um, not much is known about this animal. So it's that's all I can really give. But they're absolutely incredible. Uh, look them up. It's a really long word. Um, Plecronosaurus cambria. They're awesome. And cephalopods grow in various sizes to about one se uh, one centimeter to about sixty feet. So one centimeter could be is one of the bobtail squids. I don't know uh, much names of bobtail squids, but it's one of the bobtail squids. And then 60 feet is the giant squid. And cephalopods have developed an amazing ability to camouflage into, into their surroundings using special cells. Which using these special cells, they have learned how to communicate with each other. And they are the one, one of the most intelligent animals in the world. 
So talking about special cells, um, just in a moment, I'm going to be talking to you guys about an octopus, which is my favorite cephalopod. I think I mentioned that before. And um, I'm going to give you guys a um, little overview of the interior and exterior of the octopus. And in the exterior, I'll be mostly in the interior, actually, I'll be talking about what the special cells are. So, octopuses, let's go. I'm so excited to show you guys this. All right, so I have drawn a picture for you guys. Instead of grabbing a picture from Canva or something, I wanted to be creative because I love drawing, and I wanted to draw you guys an octopus and label some of it. I apologize for my really bad handwriting, and my drawing is okay. It could be a lot better, but I'm first time drawing on the iPad. So right now what you're looking at is the inside of a octopus. So let's start with the arms. So the arms are truly amazing. They have I don't remember how much suction cups are on each individual arm, but there are about but in total of suction cups, I mean in all the arms together, there's about twenty five hundred to three thousand suckers in total. And fun fact about one of the suction cups, if you, when you go down near the opening of the mouth, you find a large suction cups. And one of those large suction cups can actually hold a bowling ball. Now, just think of that. That is extremely good suction because I don't know if you guys have ever um, interacted with an octopus before, but their, suction, their suckers look so delicate and, like, they look like they could just break if just, like, Touched. I'm not sure, but it's just they're extremely strong. And inside of the arms, you're going to have the the nerve cords of the brain. I guess that's what you can call it. So basically, when you say if you cut an octopus's arm, you have a small piece like that, and you put a little black dye and put it under the light on a light, you're going to find that little circle, and that is the cord of two that leads down to the brain. So right here. This is our brain. I wish I could have drawn one better, but it's it's all right for now. So, like what I mentioned earlier, the brain has these all these nervous nerve uh, cords that go into the arms. So, what's really interesting about this is there in the arms, two thirds of the neurons are in their arms. So, what makes this so fascinating is the brain doesn't really have to send those insanely fast um, commands to move the arms. The arms can actually move by themselves without the brain sending any messages to the arms, which is extremely insane. I, it, I have no words for it. It's so insane. But now what's interesting about the brain is the brain is basically a donut. So because why it's a donut is right here, the beak, this little circle right here is the buccal mass. Now, this is what holds the beak. And when you follow up to the brain in that buccal mass, you're going to find the esophagus. It's really thin. And so if you, if you guys are wondering, how can an octopus eat like a whole chunk of food without damaging its brain? So the really interesting part about this is the beak inside of the beak on the bottom jaw there you're going to find this tongue called a radula and the radula is basically a tongue full of uh, backward pointing barbs and what this does it rubs against the food so it goes like this and when it does that it's going to turn to it's going to turn the food into small little pieces and when it does that it's able to fit through the esophagus and go into its um, major organs to digest and then get out. So when it eats the food, it's going to head into this crop. Then it's going to head down to the stomach. And right here is the liver. It's a pretty big liver, actually. It's going to head into the stomach, and then it's going to head out. And right here is the intestine. And then once it'll go through the intestine, does all of its thing, and the poop 
or feces, I could say, of an octopus looks like silly string. It's really interesting and weird looking. But when it goes out, it's going to head out of this weird tube looking thing, which is known as the funnel or siphon. And now this funnel or siphon um, serves a very important job. It takes in water and it um, excretes water out too. Well, that's basically um, what the uh, mantle is also for because the mantle, it, it has this huge lip around it. And what that does, it takes in that water, then the mantle will close, keep it in, filtering and stuff, and then let it out. It's really interesting. And the siphon also, right behind it, has its ink sac. And so, in order, f um, I shouldn't say in order, so how the octopus creates its ink is really interesting. So inside the funnel, there's going to be a funnel gland. And this funnel gland actually creates the mucus of the ink. And then once it does that, if the octopus feels afraid, threatened, it's going to squirt out that ink. And what's really interesting about this ink, it will disturb the senses of its predators. So its predators are like green moor eels, dolphins, sharks. Um, obviously, it doesn't hurt us, but it hurts it disturbs those animals so how how it disturbs them is when it shoots that ink it's going to disturb the senses of the animal scenting the octopus and it's also going to actually mess up their eyesight as well which is really cool so that would be so that is an awesome defense mechanism for the octopus to propel and get out of there but say if that ink does not work the say if a bull shark latches onto the octopus's arm and tears it off that is perfectly fine because the octopus will still be able to get out of there and that arm will be able to regrow so they have a special ability to regenerate their arms and what's also fascinating when if you take an arm off it's like uh some reptiles like iguanas the arm is still able to move even though it's detached off of that the the animal it's absolutely insane and right here we're going to talk about these these three little circles so octopuses have three hearts so right here hearts three so these two are the bronchial hearts so these help support transporting oxygen through the body and to also help give it oxygen and that big one right there is the systematic heart. So this heart serves the big purpose of pumping blood and the oxygen throughout the body. So what also um, makes the octopus have short, such a short lifespan is because unlike us, they are invertebrates and they don't have a backbone. Um, they don't have bones, and bones help a lot with um, producing blood and oxygen and all that major stuff in the body. And because they don't have this, these hearts have to work five times faster to keep this blood flowing. And when this animal is threatened from something, and when it propels, these hearts are like pumping like crazy. And um, it kind of just shortens the octopus's lifespan every little bit it's it's really sad but it's also uh pretty incredible how this body uh, of an octopus is it's extremely i'm not gonna say it's sad i, I want to go with a big word but i don't know much but it's just weird <laughs> let's go into the exterior so the exterior of an octopus so when you guys see an octopus, you'll find a whole bunch of colors on them. And so, like earlier, I talked about the special cells. So these special, wow, I can't say this word, special cells are called chromatophores. And this is probably my favorite part out of an um, octopus. And these chromatophores are cells with uh, muscles on them. So these cells are able to expand and decrease size. And this is how 
on this octopus change colors because this will be able to increase the colors will be able to increase the surface area of the um, that particular area of the body and then they'll be able to uh, decrease so this will be able to express more colors of the octopus and when octopus change color it is actually faster than a blink of an eye now think of that when you blink that's extremely fast and these guys can change color faster than that it's it's truly magnificent and another camouflaging mechanism it uses is in on the skin it will do like a little thing right here so the skin will be able to like make a little mountain like that and this is called papelli so octopus is the only animal in the animal kingdom to kind of shrivel up its skin and turn it into like a mountain so what this is able to do is camouflage itself into very rough uh, surroundings, say um, corals and kelp, and uh, say like uh, some seaweed. When it does that, it's you barely can't even see the octopus. It's incredible, and um, say when it's not threatened anymore that papelli is now going to shrink down and turn completely fat flat not fat <laughs> flat and then now you'll be able to see the octopus it's it's awesome it's, it's so much awesome stuff about this but what else can i talk about the uh exterior I think there's a basically, oh, this is one thing I wanted to talk about. So I wanted to talk about muscular hydro strap. And this is what the octopuses use. So muscular hydro strap is, um, let's give an example. So for those, um, when you guys are watching this, and I want you guys to move your tongue around. So you notice how your tongue is really flexible. They can move, you can do that with your tongue, it's just really flexible and you can move in all different places. So this is exactly what an octopus has. So this is how it's able to fit into circles that are like this small. Is because the arms are able to, because there's no bones or anything and it uses, the, because of the muscular hydrostrat, is able to basically take its arms and like wrap itself it's incredible and i love it it's so awesome and um that's the thing i also wanted to talk about is the muscular hydrogen it's incredible it's awesome um also one thing too before i wrap this up i don't know if you guys know this but octopuses can actually basically shed themselves so I don't know if you've seen videos. Um, I don't know if you guys follow like Octonation on Facebook or seen videos on the internet, but there are some videos of an octopus. It takes its arms, I don't really, it does a circular motion. And when it does a circular motion, and actually you'll be able to see little um, particles of the skin from the octopus. And when it does this, this actually increases the ability for the suckers to um, taste, feel, and smell. And I somehow forgot to mention that. But the suction cups also are incredibly amazing to have the ability to taste, feel, smell. That's how they're able to memorize things. So like us, our skin, we're able to feel and um, feel different textures and stuff, but they're able to do this in just a suction cup. So like tasting with our mouth and our skin feeling everything, they, they have that in just one suction cup. And it's awesome. And now I kind of lost track of what I said before, but... Um, oh, the shedding, yeah. So that's... Um, that's a cool little fun fact on how it can shed itself. But I'm going to wrap it there, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this video because I sure did. I love getting that information out, my geekiness out. Um, I hope you guys learned something new, maybe learned a lot of new stuff. And so that is going to be it for today's video. 
And I hope you guys have an amazing day, all right? So that's it. Thank you for uh, listening, guys. Mm -hmm.